Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Worsdahl, and I'd like to welcome everyone to our third seminar for the One McCormick series. For those of you who do not know me, I work in the undergraduate office with a number of our student organizations within McCormick. I look forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you and serving as your moderator for today's presentation. Our speakers for this presentation are Luis Zaragoza and Kevin Mendoza Tudares. Luis is the current president and Kevin is the current vice president of our undergraduate chapter of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Before I get started, I have a few housekeeping items to review and then I'll turn it over to Dino Tino who will introduce Luis and Kevin. This seminar will include a presentation by Luis and Kevin followed by Q&A. If you want to ask a question, please post it to the Q&A, which is a feature you can find at the bottom of the screen. I also wanna let you know that today's seminar will be recorded. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Dino Tino. Thank you, Ellen. So let me recap why we're doing this series of seminars. Um, McCormick has lots of components uh, and I'm proud to say many are really good components. But in order for the whole network of the components to work really well, we need to educate ourselves as to what's going on in other parts of components which are not clear to us. So we decided to have a series of talks. Uh, they all are touching on the diversity component of what we do. And we had Leah Payne representing Nesby, she was a chemi, and Emily Jenkins representing SWE, she was a computer science. And now we have a repeat of those two departments because Luis Zaragoza is the president of SHIP and he's a chemi, and Kevin Mendoza Tudares, who is the vice president, is from CS. Now, uh, these are undergraduate groups so far, SHIP, Nesby, Sui, but I think we can all learn, and by all I mean faculty and graduate students, about how groups organize themselves, what are the structures that they have, and if there are good things that these groups are doing, you should adapt them and copy them. Uh, structures do not recognize if the group is faculty driven or undergraduate driven or graduate driven. But the idea is to first to learn about what these groups are doing. And then if you like the way that they are organized, maybe adopt some of these things. So with that being said, I give the floor to Luis and Kevin. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Luis Aragosa. Um, as Dina Tino mentioned, I'm a um, student within the chemical engineering department, so probably representing that, um, as well as I'm a 30 here at Northwestern. Um, I'm from around the Chicago area, but living in Evanston currently, and yeah, I'm just really excited um, to talk more about SHIP and um, talk about some of the great opportunities that we have going on. And I'm Kevin, and I'm a third year uh, in computer science, and yeah. Likewise, it's Luis. I'm very excited to be here and show what SHIP has to offer. Uh, I'm unable to share my screen. All right, so getting right into it. So we're SHIP Northwestern. Um, SHIP stands for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. We'll talk about more um, what exactly that entails of, but as I um, didn't mention in my introduction, I'm the current president serving for SHIP Northwestern. I previously served as the treasurer and on the junior executive board that we call the freshman roundtable. We'll get more into those opportunities and what those look like. And yeah, Kevin will be joining me. We'll be splitting off our presentation um, he's joining me as vice president, formerly serving as secretary, and also formerly serving on the freshman roundtable, our junior executive board. Okay. 
All right, so like I mentioned, I wanted to get a bit into SHIP. So the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers is broken up um, across chapters, across colleges, all across the nation, and even some across other nations. Um, but the way they describe themselves is as one of the largest organizations dedicated to fostering Hispanic leadership in the STEM field. And what that means is that they're really targeting um, this group of people, this group of Hispanic people who are underrepresented within the fields of STEM. Um, generally, Hispanic people are one of the lowest populations, one of the lowest percentage, percentages. So they really want to make sure that they're providing opportunities um, for members like us, for undergraduate chapters, for pre-college chapters, for graduate chapters, really making sure that um, the students themselves are getting the best opportunities, the best mentorship opportunities, the best um, connections and everything just to form a strong network all across the nation. Here at Northwestern, um, we are a chapter of SHIP, but we do like to um, run a little bit differently from national SHIP. And what I mean by that is that we're open to the whole McCormick community. We're not exclusive to just Hispanic engineers or even just engineers in general. Um, quick uh, side fact is that one, two of our executive board members are within the Weinberg School, but they're just dedicated to professional development and really making sure that um, we're open to anyone who wants to develop themselves within STEM. Additionally, here at SHIP Northwestern, we take a big emphasis on um, forming connections, making sure that we have a strong undergraduate group and serving our local community, which we'll get into in just a short moment. All right, I just wanted to bring quick attention to the SHIP mission statement. So um, it'll kind of echo what I just mentioned, but our mission statement or SHIP's mission statement is SHIP changes the lives um, by empowering the Hispanic community to realize its fullest potential and to impact the world through STEM awareness, access, support, and development. So like I just mentioned, kind of echoing these ideas I just brought up, um, SHIP really wants to make sure that Hispanics within STEM are recognized, are supported, are heard, and really making sure that um, representation is there just to empower them within this field. Yeah, so echoing a lot of the ideas that we said earlier, um, while the National SHIP organization provides resources for promoting Hispanic leadership and representation within STEM, uh, we kind of create a community of individuals on campus who also support that mission. And that's typically done through a set of general meetings where um, our general members can stay up to date and uh, meet fellow members. We can also meet company representatives from companies that we've had over, uh, including like Google, Facebook, or um, you know, other companies like Qualtrics. So along with that, uh, we also have a lot of emphasis on community service, which is led by our outreach chairs. Um, that can typically involve uh, high school tutoring, which, uh, yeah, so high school tutoring, which is just providing a lot of resources for uh, like the community outside of Northwestern, um, also kind of like fostering the, um, fostering the, the initial inspiration to kind of pursue STEM. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, programs and events for uh, personal and professional development. So that would be like leadership development uh, for our freshmen. We also have like alumni panels where people can learn about the different paths that people have gone down and where they could, um, where that could lead them. And we also provide a mentorship program where new members can learn from some more um, senior members about what it's like to be in STEM and what they can get out. And on top of all the work that it sounds like, we still have a lot of fun with our social events where members can just um, meet each other and have fun. So a lot of what I mentioned earlier with the community outreach, um, this is led by our outreach chairs. <clears throat> and the first big program that we have is uh, EFSA, which is the fifth grade student initiative. This is used to inspire students at a very early age to gain an interest in STEM fields. Um, that could be doing like small activities, uh, kind of like touring Northwestern's campus, seeing uh, how fun it is to actually just study STEM and uh, know what you're doing um, as a STEM student. Also, we have the high school initiative program. So this is very similar to, F to FSIP, but there's a higher emphasis on college, um, the application process, financial aid, advising and other very important and useful resources uh, that they could get from that. This was actually started by an old, um, an older ship member, 
of Michael Kaluta, who graduated from BME at Northwestern in 2010. Um, he went to Northside College Prep in Chicago, and that was actually the first high school that got involved with this program. And uh, with that, we've kept that um, program running for several years, and yeah, we're really excited to continue the program. We also have high school mentorship where similar to HSIP and providing all those resources, it's more, this is more of a uh, extended period of time, giving seniors and other students uh, the resources that they need to succeed after high school. Uh, we also have the Evanston Township High School uh, Regional Science Bowl. So a lot of uh, our, so we have a lot of volunteers, which you can see on the top right, uh, where we kind of like coach these students in the, the science bowl competitions. And the uh, Evanston Township High School, like in the Ship Junior chapter, really loves this program. And we love to just like get involved with them every year in that. And finally, we have Noche de Ciencias, which it's like HSIP, uh, or like FSIP actually, um, but it's a much larger program which involves collaboration which, with uh, several other ship chapters in the greater Chicago area, um, as well as Illinois. So we do a lot of work with a uh, ship chapter at University of Illinois Chicago, um, maybe Urbana-Champaign, and just a lot of these groups coming together to inspire younger students uh, in STEM. All right, so one of the other great things that SHIP does on a national basis and even a regional basis, which we'll get into, is host conventions for our members. Um, and these conventions are honestly week-long things that kind of just go on. They have a lot of great opportunities from uh, career fairs with exclusive um, recruiters that are looking out for these Hispanic students, kind of recognizing that there's a gap in recruitment, gap in diversity within their own corporations. So they really go out and target and it's just a really great opportunity because there's a lot of um, big names. I think you could see on the bottom left with uh, uh, former member Javier and Fabian is that you can kind of see all the different companies that are going out, making sure that they're meeting the Hispanic engineers halfway and really providing these great opportunities for them. Um, I personally had the chance to attend last year in Phoenix, which was a really great opportunity. Um, it was just really exciting seeing so many students like me um, really pursuing um, a passion and a field within STEM um, kind of making sure to bridge that gap and really making sure that they're getting them their names out there and networking with other Hispanic engineers within universities across the country. Um, not only at the national convention do they have the career fair, but they have several workshops to develop yourself as a professional, to network with others, to learn um, what a career would look like in the advanced field. So I personally found those really useful um, to build myself as a professional, kind of learn further of what to expect um, past my educational career. Um, this year, well, unfortunately, I would have been in Denver at the end of the month and any other members that were interested, um, it'll still be happening virtually. And registration is still open for that. So if you are interested at all, possibly, um, definitely just reach out to me. We can figure out how to sort that out. It's a great opportunity. And I really encourage as many people to sign up for that as they can. Um, on top of the national level conferences that we have, we also have um, regional conferences. And these are a lot more member-based, a lot more personal. It's a smaller region and schools that we've collaborated with, um, as Kevin mentioned, with the Noche de Ciencias. So it's really cool to get to see these members again. Again, there's a career fair um, with a lot of companies that also just want to help out, um, help recruit some of those Hispanic engineers within the STEM field. But also another interesting event that we have is NILA, the National Institute for Leadership Investment. Um, this is a really great and ongoing opportunity that's kind of new, kind of fresh. Um, but what happens in this opportunity is that the U, UIC, the University of Illinois Chicago, host a summit, is what they call it, for different executive members across the board. And they kind of get ideas of how do we raise our numbers in recruitment? How do we make sure we're getting the best opportunities for our members? And Northwestern, as one of the um, younger chapters compared to the other um, ship chapters within our region, it's really helpful for executive members such as Kevin and myself to learn more about how can we get the best value to our members um, and how can we reach out to a broader McCormick community to make sure everyone has access to the opportunities presented. So yeah, those are really great opportunities and just really exciting um, for all SHIP members to benefit off of. Um, something that we touched upon earlier is um, our personal involvements within the Freshman Roundtable. So the Freshman Roundtable is a application-based but not strict at all um, we kind of accept any freshmen that are interested. Um, 
And it's a funnel, a system to get into higher executive positions within SHIP. So part of the freshman roundtable is that you get to host events for SHIP and you, and we'll kind of talk about it um, a little bit in our social events that we got to host as, as FRT members. Um, but it's just a really great opportunity. I think it's something that um, Nesby has a really similar system um, that we also use. And I think it's really great because it's really hard, at least for freshmen to get involved, hold these upper leadership positions. And that's something that we're offering, making sure that they're involved early so that they can grow and throughout their whole undergraduate career here at Northwestern, they're really learning and becoming great executive members, which is seen in our current executive board and I'm sure we'll see in future executive boards. Um, like I mentioned with the freshman roundtable, is that still an ongoing opportunity? If you're interested at all, just reach out. But yeah, you get to sit in on these executive meetings, join us, have a voice on executive decisions. I know that was really exciting for me as a freshman. Um, it's something that a former Northwestern alumna named Brent Williams got me into since we went to the same high school. But it was just really exciting to learn that I, as a freshman incoming, can learn more, can grow more with SHIP and even go on to take the president position, which, I, which I've taken today. Another um, freshman involvement uh, action that we have is the mentorship program. So this is actually a program that we're bringing back. Um, it was a program that was available in the past, but kind of died off over the past years. So we're really excited to bring this back. I know it's a topic of interest for a lot of freshmen, especially in times of um, virtual needs where we can't really connect in person, can't really have the opportunity to um, really network and get to meet each other. So this is a great way to pair underclassmen, new students with upperclassmen, um, SHIP members who have been through the same classes, who have been um, through all the same struggles that they may experience here at Northwestern. So I think um, that's a really great opportunity for them to grow and it's really exciting um, to kind of just even pair these mentors with mentees and see what will grow out of that program. So along with that, um, we do have a lot of social events that we like to uh, put on. Uh, one of those being Ship Skate Day. That was actually an event that Luis and I started as part of FRT, um, our, like our freshman year. And after that, it actually became a quite popular um, annual event that we kept going. Uh, along with that, we also have food socials where members can just, um, maybe like at the end of a tough week, they can all just sit down and enjoy, enjoy each other's company and just have good food. While both of those are very much in-person events, we've also had virtual game nights uh, recently where even with the pandemic, we can still have fun and get to know each other. Yeah, all right. So as we near the close of our slides, I just kind of wanted to talk about how we are accommodating to our virtual efforts and kind of um, adapting to our new environment. So as Kevin just mentioned, is that we're having these virtual events such as like game nights and such of that. And that actually came from feedback that we got from our first general meeting. We really want to make sure that our members' voices are heard, um, meeting what they would want to see. And one of the main things that they want to see is they just want to get to know each other. They want to form a community before they even get to Northwestern, even come back to Northwestern. So we thought that was a great way to meet each other, have a little bit of friendly competition. And yeah, just really get to meet other SHIP members before even arriving to campus. In addition, we're really, um, our executive board is really working to find ways to um, perform virtual service. Um, something that we kind of piloted, kind of did a test run in the summer is having a free race competition. Just a quick uh, intro on free race is that it's a website where you get to answer the different trivia questions. And for each question, you get different grains of rice that are donated to people in need. So that was just kind of like a cool solution that we thought of. It was kind of on the spot and just kind of an example of how we're adapting to our new environment and how we plan to further adapt to keep our um, our value of community service going on, even in times of the pandemic. And just a quick uh, shout out to the intro below. I really like like seeing these in pictures and it's really nice to see that was one of our first orientation events. And yeah, so it's nice to see that some of the faces stuck around and um, yeah, just kind of grow even before we get to meet each other in person once again. All right, so that's all we have for the presentation. Shortly we'll be getting into questions that will be fielded from both like the <laughs> The general audience and some that we have pre-prepared. Um, sorry about the spacing on the bottom. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, do down on the bottom, we have different um, QR links to our group me and our newsletter. Both are equally important. I think those are the main ways we get information out to our members, what's going on with our new events. We'll kind of um, just really stay in the loop with SHIP and making sure that you're getting involved whenever possible or whenever interested. 
So I definitely recommend scanning those and getting involved, even if you're just mildly curious, um, definitely go ahead and join us. We'll be excited to have you. And yeah, other contacts on there, such as our Facebook and our email, for any reason that you may want to contact us, go ahead, reach out. We're always open and always um, willing to hear back from our members in the McCormick community. Great. I want to I want to thank both of you so much for the presentation, and uh, you did a great job of like talking a lot and showing us a lot of what SHIP does, especially in areas of programming. Um, just a reminder, if anybody has a question, please post it to the Q&A, which is a feature you'll find in the bottom of your screen. And while we wait for those questions to come in, um, we have a few to get us started. And so I'm actually very interested in kind of finding out from both of you, um, what was it about SHIP that kind of pulled you in to get you involved with the organization? So how about Kevin, you take it first. We'll give Luis, Luis a moment to catch his breath since he finished <laughs> up the, the presentation. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest reason that got me into SHIP in the first place was just knowing that I could have a community of people that maybe identify with me or just like support, um, support those of like with like that share my identity, um, to have their success and just along with, with all of that, making sure that we all have a, um, just a very welcoming community from what I've learned, um, my like very early freshman year and even like the summer before, uh, SHIP was just a very welcoming uh, place with just like many people that were all there and supporting the same mission. And it was something that I really wanted to be a part of and something that I was very excited for. Awesome. And Luis, what was it about it that pulled you in? Yeah, so like I mentioned, I had my first introduction with uh, alumni from my same high school and an alumni from um, McCormick, he studied electrical engineering um, back a few years ago, but he told me that it would be great to get involved with these kind of identity-based organizations such as Nesby and SHIP. Um, that was even before I got to Northwestern, um, but what really stuck me around and what made me want to stay and grow with SHIP is that, like Kevin mentioned, it was really great to have a community of individuals like me, similar backgrounds, similar majors, and um, all the stuff like that, but it was just really exciting for me to get involved early, for me to have that kind of leadership position, and then really just form like great social circles and get to meet one another um, from within the SHIP community, which I thought was really great, and it kind of kept me going and has kept me going up until now. Excellent. And you mentioned in your presentation the strong relationship that your chapter has with um, the junior chapter at Evanston Township High School. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why that's such a priority for your organization? Yeah, definitely. I think um, our strong connection with our SHIP Junior chapter in the Evanston Township High School comes from our proximity. Um, them being also an Evanston-based school really um, gives our members the closest chance to connect with them, kind of reach out, drive out there whenever we need. So having that proximity definitely is a benefiting factor. But also I think it's just the long-term relationship that we formed with the SHIP Junior chapter. Um, we've been collaborating them for several years now. And as Kevin mentioned earlier, with our outreach events, we've been um, coaching for the Regional Science Bowl. We've been hosting them at our ship pitch, our annual ship banquet at the end of the year. So just having that long-term relationship, um, serving as mentors whenever they need um, for their introduction to the college world, I think that's really important and why our relationship has been long lasting and strong. Awesome. And one of the questions from our attendees, um, they're asking about how they can participate in the mentoring program. So do you have, um, do you want to give a plug for that, how people can get involved? Yeah, definitely. Um, feel free to reach out. Um, we don't have a direct form to give out right now, at least feel free to reach out to the ship at u.northwestern. Definitely will set you up, get you connected within that program. There's a form where we can sign out. Um, we're just about to start like hosting our programs so that we could pair um, a mentor with a mentee. So definitely just reach out to us or stick around and we'll be able to help out further as you need. Excellent. And you do get a shout out to keep up the great work that you're doing. Um, what kind of ways does SHIP um, create opportunities for undergraduates and graduate students to come together? Yeah, so I think the best um, way is kind of making sure that we have a strong connection. So graduate students, um, while smaller in our numbers at SHIP, they definitely make sure to show their support. So I know we had a lot of graduate students show out to Noche de Ciencias, kind of help us out with that. But right now our current executive board is really focusing on making sure that we have more of that graduate connection. So in the short future, we plan to have a graduate panel from 
uh, SHIP undergraduate members or even just uh, Hispanic identifying members within the McCormick community, really making sure that they um, have a chance to connect with our undergraduate members, really close that gap and making sure that we have those relationships there and they can kind of talk about more their experience um, going from undergrad to graduate and what that may look like since I feel like that can be um, a really hazy topic for many of our members, at least mm -hmm. coming into Northwestern. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also want to have um, research um, kind of workshops, um, kind of get our members involved and familiar with all the different um, components that go into getting into graduate school, if that was what you were interested in. So definitely be on the lookout for that as it's something that our executive board is putting emphasis on. Excellent. Um, and Kevin, what do you feel are like some ways that either administrative staff or faculty um, within McCormick can help to support the organization? Yeah, so one, one of the things that we've been looking for um, within our exec board is we're looking for like events and programs where students and other members that we um, of SHIP Northwestern can kind of like meet and have discussions with the staff and faculty. Um, we're looking to reach out soon so that like um, you can actually like facilitate these sorts of events. Like right now, there typically aren't too many opportunities for mm -hmm. students to do so out like outside of like a lecture or office hours or even advising meetings. So just being able to facilitate that connection between members and faculty um, kind of like allows us to have like points of contact for like if they need support and their support helps us achieve our mission of just meeting um, successful Hispanic leaders. Fantastic. Um, and so this is kind of becoming the, uh, I guess, one of my most consistent questions <laughs> in these sessions, because um, I think it, it springs off of hope <laughs> that we have um, moving forward. Um, but if you could both just say real quickly, what's one thing you look forward to um, when we can all be together in the same room? And how about Luis, you go first on that? Yeah, for sure. So like I mentioned, even now that we're getting introduced and familiar with our new students, I think a lot of what they're looking forward to is just forming a community within Hispanic engineers here at McCormick and anyone who's interested in professional development. Already like we're getting to see familiar faces at our general meetings, getting together for game nights, getting together for socials for more important professional opportunities. So I think it's just great to see a lot of those recurring returning faces and really getting to know them when we return back um, to our rooms and tech. So I'm just really excited to get to meet them, to get to know them better and yeah, just socialize better with them. Awesome, awesome. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, likewise with Luis. Um, we love having all of our social events. Um, right now we've been having them all virtual. And while we've been having like a great time um, being able to like have that connection, it's not the same as an actual like person-to-person -person connection that's, that we get um, whenever we're actually on campus and just enjoying each other's company, enjoying each other's time, and just even like sharing some great food. Excellent. And I never thought I'd miss LR5 so much, but <laughs> um, we do. <laughs> so as you may have noticed, our time is coming to an end again. Um, I want to take a moment to thank Luis and Kevin for taking time to share some of the history of our ship chapter. Luis and Kevin, I wish we were in person and you could hear the applause from our live studio audience. Um, in lieu of that, I'd like to give you both a virtual high five. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank Dino Tino again for creating this opportunity for us to come together, our marketing staff for continuing to make sure everything ran smoothly. And finally, for each of you for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, I look forward to seeing you at next week's One McCormick event. Take care. <laughs>